Hello boys and girls, this is Brian with Mythic MTG Tech, and today I'm covering the best misprint ever. Misprints have been around in Magic since the very beginning. Alpha has some of the m most famous ones. Cyclopean Tomb here has no casting cost, and Elvis Archers had the power and toughness switched, well... Orcish Aura Flame over there is missing one red in its casting cost. Ever since I started playing back in 94-95, I've always been interested in misprints. I have a particular set of factors that I use for judging what the best misprints are. The first factor is how playable a misprint is. It's cool to have weird, odd, unusual looking cards, but unless they're playable, the type you can really use to crush somebody with in a game, I'm much less interested in them. One of my favorite misprints early on, or actually the second time that I came back to Magic, was the Cursed Scroll. The Japanese version that you see here actually has a lower activation cost for it. This card was an incredibly playable tournament card. You could shock people each turn for three mana, and the Japanese was even cooler in being able to possibly do it for two. There was some argument directly after the Japanese version was released which version was correct. Wizards quickly clarified that and pointed out that the Japanese was a misprint. The next factor that's really important for me is that it needs to be really obvious that something's a misprint. Although the Cursed Scroll is extremely playable, it's not obvious on first light that this is some type of an unusual card that you're playing with, and the two activation costs could easily be missed. The more unusual the card is, the, the more that I like the misprint. This is probably my favorite brainstorm that I've seen floating around. It's printed on the back of a magic card, so you have one of the absolute best one blue casting cost spells ever put together, and clearly misprinted in a way that it is obvious to people that it's a misprint. The score is very high on my factors for extremely good misprints. The last factor that I have is when you can multiply what's going on in some way, if you can double the fun of the misprints. For example, this set of foreign black border revised cards has several different cards on at the same time, and this would be an ideal card to throw into a black-white deck. You have a very playable planes and at least slightly playable unholy strength on the same card. Uh, it's very rare that you find cards that combine these multiple aspects that are both playable and cool. So we're going to move on to why I think that I have found the best absolute misprint ever. I'm a little bit biased. I, early on, I was a stasis player. I loved playing stasis, not allowing my opponents to untap and finding a way to return stasis to my hand. Now, as a bit of a more mature player who also plays some casual games, I understand that I probably tortured several players out of ever playing Magic again by playing Stasis in my early years, but it, this was definitely a hardcore control deck that I enjoyed early on, and it has a few cards in it that are extremely important to it. Finding a kill condition is very important in a stasis deck, and Sarah Angel was one of my favorites. The Vigilance ability, or as it was called at the time, does not tap when attacking is extremely useful when your deck doesn't untap. I also really liked the artwork from this card, and this is a classic for an alpha and beta. This card was even pulled at one point in time for being too strong of a creature. Uh, wow, how magic has changed, where this is now considered a bit too weak of a creature to make most tournament decks. The other card that really jumped out to me as, as amazing when it was printed was Time Elemental. Time Elemental in Legends has the ability to return a permanent to owner's hand for four mana. This allowed you to get out to play lock decks where you were returning possibly two permanents per turn or two of your opponent's land per turn. Also comboed extremely well with stasis and being able to return stasis every turn at the end of your opponent's turn so that you got on tap faces and your opponent didn't. This is this combination of these two cards is what brings me to my absolute favorite misprint ever. The best misprint that has come out. That is the Angel de la Serra with the Time Elemental artwork on it. If you'll notice, it's got the artist uh, for... Did it for... Now we're moving on to my absolute 
favorite misprint ever. This is the Sarah Angel with Time Elemental artwork on it. This brings back a lot of nostalgia of two cards that I loved playing, and occasionally even playing in the same deck, combining to them together to make what is a very, very pretty, very playable, very useful card from that early Magic history. This is a fourth edition, rare, printed in Italian, and has obviously the wrong artwork on it. It's extremely cool and rather rare misprint. Love to hear your feedback on what you think the best misprint is, either using my three factors or your own factors. I also wanted to thank Shane, the founder of CCG Card House, who recently helped me come across one of these while I was down visiting his store in Vancouver, Washington. And I would like to thank Keith, the misprint guy, for inspiring me to do a misprint video. If you are interested in more cool, unusual, and weird misprints, I definitely recommend checking out his YouTube channel, and he's also got a Facebook group. Um, this has been Brian Rowe with MTG Mythic Tech the best misprint ever series. Whether you uh, agree or disagree, I'd love to hear your comments and even see some uh, pictures of what your favorite misprints are. Thanks.